Hi everyone, welcome to Dungeon Apes, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast hosted by Travis uh, Stevens. Am I? Is it Steven? Steven, it's one. Steven. That's uh, the hardest thing about my last name. Travis gosh. Steven and myself, Drew Silva. Mm-hmm. We're just talking about Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. Yeah, and um, so we're gonna go over Dungeons and Dragons. We're also gonna go over probably a lot of. Um, uh, well, it's all Dungeons and Dragons related content, right? So like yeah. the how-to, the playing, getting TV. people together, what it, what's happening in the world of Dungeons and Dragons? Because now it actually has more of a world of Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Before it was, it seemed to be very personal, one-on-one experience with you and your friends. Everything in used little to be hubs. homebrew. Exactly. Yeah. Everything was like little hubs of like your individual experience with your friends, not an experience shared with other people. Right. And now everything's so mainstream and uh, you see, especially with these other podcasts and these other channels and YouTube series, you know, Critical Role, Matt Mercer, um, Geek and Sundry, the College Humor cast and what they Mm do. Um, You see all of these people, even uh, Manganiello has his own character. Who's Um, Manganiello? I'm bad with names. I'm better with faces. um, The guy from uh, the stripper dude, Magic Mike. Oh, duh. The guy we saw, the guy, the, like, the uh, Death Saves? Yeah. Oh, duh. Yeah. Okay. So I, he's, he's got fuck. his own. No worries. Ooh. He, you know, he, I'm, bad. See, I'm, ba- I'm bad with names. I immediately character. know that guy. <laughs> yeah. He's got his own canon character. Um, and, and all of these people Archon. in these shows combined mm-hmm. are creating and paving a way for just a much more streamlined, open D&D experience. I mean, you can play right out of Matt Mercer's world. You can buy the books. You can play it out of it is it's insane it's like your own personal lord of the rings that's interactive and malleable to anyone who wants to incorporate with it yeah Which over the last couple of years mm-hmm. D's just blown up you see pop culture pop culture references like with stranger things mm-hmm. um you know that all the villains from stranger things are named off D characters that actually have no relation with the villains are you serious? Yeah. So I didn't even know that. Yeah. The Demigorgon uh-huh. and the Mind Flayer and uh-huh. all of these, the big baddies of D&D yeah. are actually, are of that show or from D&D, from the <laughs> old school monster <laughs> manual. All That's of awesome. That's and awesome. The uh, the characters themselves, you know, the, the kids, they have their party. And Elle, who's the girl that comes into play, mm-hmm. the main character, she becomes their mage of the group, you know, because she has magical Well, that's abilities. true because I, and now that you say that, it makes a whole lot more sense. Like, I know that when Stranger Things was getting big and everything, people like it was like a, like a nerd hipster thing to be like, oh, we're gonna like play D and D now, like we're going for yeah. it. And, and but um, now that you actually bring that to the forefront, I do realize that they do reference it pretty damn hard. Like like, <laughs> like yeah, not just like oh, let's go play D and D, but yeah, like you said, like they incorporate into like their real life group is like, yo, you're the mage of the group, right? But in the real life of what they're doing and everything, which is cool. It is. It's um. What's funny is that the at the end of it, um, this third season, one of the characters will the whole time he's trying to get the other boys to play. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we can't just play. <laughs> I've D&D seen those memes forever. that he's like, stop! Did you think you're gonna exactly. play D and D forever? And then they show like the group of like forty year old dudes that are like, roll Still for playing. initiative. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it, that picture of Will, and he's mm-hmm. he's sitting there in his D and D costume he made up for the show. Yeah, it's like we can't play D and D forever. <laughs> and three slides down, it's Matt Mercer <laughs> yeah. in Critical Role, and he's about to play. Yeah. And so things like that have really added to the appeal to D&D and the creative licensing, the amount of celebrities and other figures getting involved. And I mean, YouTube for one and podcasts have just absolutely blown it out of the water. Mm-hmm. And so for, for nerds who have been playing it forever when no one cared and it was just kind of a quiet thing, it's awesome to see this creative licensing and to actually see. And the coolest thing I think about all of it is being able to now see so many different campaigns so many different dungeon masters so many different Mm -hmm. types of role play Mm -hmm. and to build yourself around it and you're not like the one thing that i really like about where this is heading with dungeons and dragons and things is my background was in animation and so like my biggest thing was is i loved spending a lot of time on something and my value in reward and return was then the experience i got to share with other people with it later so Absolutely. The correlation to that is like now, like if one thing that would have stopped me, not necessarily stopped me, but how I wouldn't have squeezed as much out of Dungeons and Dragons when I was younger was the fact that let's say we had some really insane um, uh, campaign that was just 
like should have been a movie type thing. You know what I mean? But amongst your friends and you're like, God, that moment is gone. Like we have that moment together, but it's insane that no one else will ever get to experience like, like the death of this character, the way that, how much, it, how important it was to our small group. Right. But now, and not, not to downsize uh, that experience because that's that experience by itself is magical, but to take that experience and be able to share that on another level with other viewers or other people that can be watching in, it's like, it's cool to be like, oh man, it sucks when that character died, share it with your friends, and then be able to take a step back and be like, what did you guys think? Yeah. And everyone else be like, I couldn't believe it, blah, 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 blah. And then you have fan favorites and you have, you know, fan oh, yeah. art and like little fan fiction side stories and all these other things that are created from just people stepping into and wanting to be part of that, of your world that you've essentially like cast with your friends with others it's a culture i mean exactly it's, um the greatest thing about it is like all our art forms it's an expression mm -hmm. music um painting whatever the art form may be tv shows uh D, D role playing and creating a world and that interaction as you are portraying a character and what that character would want to do that's a form of expression that's really artistic mm -hmm. Um, Joe Manganiello says it best mm -hmm. that he loves how artistic um, D and D can be, and that's why him and uh, I think it's Sophie, Sophia Vargara. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm pronouncing this wrong. That's, that's why the basement of their house is a dungeon. Right. It was supposed to be a wine cellar. I saw. I saw his thing. He was like, it was going to be a wine cellar, and he was like, no, this is now the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, like, especially for actors, it's. <clears throat> It's like the perfect training ground. Would it not be? I mean, like, if you think about it. It's constant improv. It, it, it's, it's all constant. it is. It's just yeah. you, you have, here's your character, and now interact with your other characters in, organically. Absolutely. And it's so raw because you don't have a script. Mm -hmm. You never know who's going to go off the rails mm -hmm. or what direction someone's going to take things mm -hmm. in. When we play our group, you know, when we sit down and we film, mm -hmm. there's nothing scripted. Mm -mm. We'll talk about some world building things together and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but we don't. We don't ever sit down and be like, and at this point, you were going to say this, this, and this. Not at all. I mean, you know, last week's episode, we had some atrocities towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you couldn't script that if you wanted no, to. No, no, not at all. Like, and, and, this, and the fact that, like, last week we had, um, uh, we almost had a, a character full die. Yeah. Uh, part of which was because of something that happened two episodes earlier. Yeah. With an interaction that no one would have necessarily foresaw having an impact in the future necessarily like uh, Hammond trying to get with the doctor's wife, which we didn't know was the doctor's wife at all. Right. And once we did know that that didn't necessarily lead into anything that would necessarily like put us in a situation where like, Oh, that just screwed us. Like, yeah, I might have an uncomfortable interaction later, but fast forward two weeks and our, and our next uh, two episodes later. And one of our character almost dies because of that interaction that he had with the wife now the doctor doesn't want to heal our buddy because he's like yo you're going around porking my wife yeah get out of here <laughs> like <laughs> it's like it's, it's wonderful those interactions, like in an attempted to kill sean's character um even our crafting of like two weeks that we'd planned for it, it wasn't even like you're going to say these things and do these things so we're going to be standing in these spots because we don't know any of those parameters when we go into it, it was kind of just like once we got one of us realized that this could be the moment we kind of were like just gave the like the head nudge of like this you know it's time we're doing it, you know? And so, um, and again, it didn't even go remotely as planned. And I think that's the beauty of the fact is, is, is it's putting, it's giving us kind of all a little uncomfortable scenario where, because none of us are actors, right. none of us have that kind of experience, but it doesn't always necessarily matter your skill level. As long as you're passionate about what you're doing, if you put yourself yeah. in that character, which is, that is what an actor is doing. Like, I think genuinely people who, have played D and D and nothing else. Like, let, you know, they're not actors. They're not anything. But they, maybe they've played D and D for twenty years. I bet you they're dope actors. I bet yeah. you can put them in an acting scenario and you'd be like, "Poof! This is your name. You have a limp, and you're from <laughs> the Bronx. Go!" And I bet you they'll survive. Like, they'll do well just simply because of the fact that they played D and D and they had that improvisational uh, uh, bone tickled. Right. And I think that's D and D's more leaning towards the role play acting aspect of it. Um, back in the day that aspect was very much there but i think the fighting the monsters and 
kind of this cookie cutter. We go through a dungeon, mm-hmm. we get the loot, we save the chick, right. we do this, this, and this, or save the dude, you know, whatever your party's into. Um, you have this sort of cookie cutter, this is what we do scenario. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, when you watch all of these groups, uh, people are more interested in the role play aspect and the expression aspect and being, um, being something else for a time in a world that's different than ours. Right. They want that. They want the character development. It's like it we becomes were, an escape. Yeah. And we, and we were, we were kind of raised in the realm of you get everything now. And I think right. we're at the cusp of our generation kind of working backwards. We're used to having everything instantly, instant gratification, instant resort, instant rewards. Nothing yeah. takes long, fast, 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 fast. And if you go back to like, the concepts of how D&D, like you say, was played before, more cookie cutter, more like, let's just get to combat, start rolling some dice, because that's what you wanted. Everything was slow. You're like, I want, give me that action. Give me that, I want it now. But now, since we have everything now, we're like, I'm, I kind of want to just like talk with that random NPC and trip on something and, and pick myself up and, and go fishing and like do all these things that are kind of like the little character development things that you kind of like savor more now because we, we don't get more of that. And I think right. that's kind of like where... <clears throat> part of the the culture is allowing to like D and D's coming up. Yeah. And coming up more and more because of that. Like that that yearning for that escape, but that also not that just instant gratification that that, that overall like the building upon something, a building upon of a character of your escape. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um it's a sense of community. Mm-hmm. You're sitting down and playing with three to five other people which so doesn't happen a lot anymore no like like we don't get a whole lot of those interactions where we're like oh okay we are meeting once a week and we are doing this right like there isn't a whole lot of those things happening anymore so dd is nope. another great platform for that to happen it is if you are doing that you're probably doing it over a video game mm-hmm. um think about how often people have phones in front of their faces mm-hmm. um one of our longest conversations is on a group message right absolutely we, we have this group message that's constant and sometimes it's like we spend so much time talking on the group message mm-hmm. that when our friend gets back from San Diego, mm-hmm. we've heard everything already. Exactly. And it kind of takes away from some of the, hey, man, what was it like? And then you get that firsthand experience mm-hmm. and that that physical, uh, vocal interaction with people. Mm-hmm. And D&D guarantees that unless you play online, which is totally possible. Right. And there's nothing wrong with it. Right. But every time you play with a group of friends – one, you get to see your friends, and two, you're guaranteed those social interactions that are slipping further and further away mm-hmm. um, from us as a society. Mm-hmm. And just the just having a a kind of like a common uh, ground activity, I think it 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 builds those relationships. Like the, the whole reason the group chat exists is because of what we're doing for D and D. Right. And so now we care more about what each other is doing in their daily lives just because we have this common ground of like, yo, it's Friday game time. Like, have you done your things? Have you done this, this and that? But we're throughout the week, we're keeping up on each other and what we're doing. Just like you said, like the San Diego thing, you probably wouldn't even thought twice about it until he got back to tell you about it. You're like, Oh shit, I totally forgot. You went to, you went to uh, San Diego. Right. So you got those little tidbits in there, but then when he does come back, you, you do get those little bits, but it draws you in to hear the full story in real life again. That's true. Uh, because yeah. we are tied together by that one thing once yeah. a week. It's definitely built um, friendships through mm-hmm. here. Um, and what's really cool is uh, kind of the whole, I brought my people, you brought your people. Now all our now people, people hang out. Yeah, yeah, now we're people. Um, and I've seen that so many times with D&D. Um, I've actually, you know, Kaz and Bree, who are mm-hmm. players who have played here before and they play in another one of my campaigns. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I started working with him, um, what, like s- it's almost been six years now. Mm-hmm. And other than, um, one of my close friends, everyone else of my friend group he's been introduced to mm-hmm. has been over a game of D and D, whether it was three years ago mm-hmm. at my old rental or the first time we moved into our new house or here, um, every encounter he's had with my friends. Mm-hmm. And the group that we've made has been through this game. And I think it's a rare, healthy, organic way to interact and meet new people. Yeah. Um, because it's like the traditional, and, and I don't like this mold, like the traditional is just like a party. Like people getting hammered, that's how you meet somebody. Is you're at a house party somewhere, and that's how you get to know somebody. There's nothing wrong with that, 
But I do think that there's something to be said about healthy alternatives for people right. in a realm of something that they might be more comfortable with. Absolutely. Like someone who I, they're like, oh, I play D and D. I would love to meet people who also play D and D. I mean, it, any meeting of others is usually under a common ground of some sort of uh, uh, shared interest. Um, but as this becomes more and more of a thing, more and more people are open to give it a shot if they aren't into it. And so, so some people who would otherwise a not go to that party already, uh, and b not have a way to meet new people doing what they love. They kind of just sit there and depress. And I think that's a big subject, uh, uh, in our culture right now is people just being depressed because you have this detachment of being able to cut contact people constantly yet also not contact anyone at all. Right. Like, which is a weird, that's a weird that's thing. A, that's an important distinction though. Right. Exactly. So, you know, it, it, kind of what we wanted to sit down and originally talk about, and we're kind of getting there. We took a nice little intro of why we love D and D, but it's, the most common question I'll, I'll get asked by people is how, you know, how do I get involved? How do I play D and D? Absolutely, that is that is a question that <laughs> I still don't really have a good answer for because people are now watching Adventaria, and they're like, "Well, I want to play," and I'm like, "I would I would love to have you play, <laughs> but we have one DM, and no, we have negative one spot at the table. <laughs> like, we, we already there's no more room. Don't have any more room, right?" And so how do we, you so know, how, how do we get people involved without how, Yeah, how do you sprout more DMs? How do so, you get, how do you, where do you go? That's tough. Yeah. But the easiest thing to do is get, get with your friends. Mm -hmm. Find a group of friends. And I always say there, there's multiple routes on finding a party. And we'll kind of touch over those. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get your close friends. You can find something online. Mm -hmm. Or you can use social media groups. Facebook's great for it to find some of these groups of people to be involved with. But more so than anything, uh, I think interfacing with your close friends and then how do you bring it up to them if you're interested and they may not be and that's the biggest thing right is there like a um is there like a introduction into dungeons and dragons trial run that, like if you had a package deal where you're like yeah, okay here's is. a new dm who wants to get a group going um, but doesn't know, isn't experienced to just like throw something together, but at the same time is going to also have a new group of players that can't also yep. help them along. Like we had you and you were like, okay, this is how Dungeons and Dragons is played. And you kind of like training wheels dust through the process until you can kind of pop us off and we're like, okay, we're rolling. Yeah. And even though we're still, we still stumble here and there, at least we got that. We the got basics the training wheels. down. Exactly. Yeah. Um, D and D is really cool because Wizards of the Coast has an amazing starter kit. Um, it is super impressive, but one of the, one of the most exciting ways and how I actually got started mm -hmm. was we figured it out and fumbled through on our own. We watched podcasts, we watched some of the YouTube series, and then I picked up a rule book, a player's mm -hmm. handbook, which is the basic rules. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later got a dungeon master's guide. Um, and between those things, uh, failed and failed and failed and mm -hmm. failed, but it was a blast. My friends had a blast failing with me. Things right. would happen, and we'd all be like, "Wait a minute, we got to figure out what to do." Right. And that that organic growth mm -hmm. is something. Years later, when you've played with the same people for uh, months and months and months, you look back and you're like, "Oh man, remember when that we did something like that?" Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, that is probably my best advice is to just fumble through it so so you would suggest like getting a group together that you're already comfortable with yeah in a common grounds of like we don't know what we're doing but we're for it let's do this yeah and kind of embracing uh some of the content that's now out there because before you didn't have that content right like before it was literally you had to know somebody who was dope like that they <laughs> know what they're doing right straight up there was no like you can just go and mm -hmm. look on your phone real quick and you can kind of get the gist of it and like roll. No, and we kind of had those resources everywhere. And now that it's getting more and more popular, it's on a bigger scale. It's not just seeing some dude with a little tiny like phone recording himself telling you how to DM. It's like big name celebrities doing It'll it in a whole, whole studio thing. with multiple camera angles and a whole studio set up and, and they're doing it professionally. And you're like, yo, that's really cool. And I can see how you can go through that enough to get you hooked to be engaged to listen. I think that's the biggest right. thing. And, and I found that in um, kind of our episodes is, and stuff is, and the reason why I'm making like a lot of the upgrades and stuff, one, I wanted to get to this point regardless, but two, I do know that 
as as content, you're competing with things like Fortnite, where someone flicks over, and no matter where that person is in playing that video game at that very second, then you switched over to that channel. Uh, you get what's happening. Yeah. Whereas in D and D, um, it's kind of like starting in the middle of a Lord of the Rings movie on the third film in the middle of the movie, <laughs> having not seen any of it yet in the middle of a uh, dialogue between three characters that are really crucial to the story that you don't know the names to. No. And so you kind of have to be able to grip <laughs> the person to stay there for a few minutes to be like, okay, I think this curly haired dude is Frodo and he's important or something like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so <laughs> I, I, I think that it's nice to see, you know, like the, the big names and things like that incorporating something that does draw the average person in first absolutely to give them to give them the chance to be able to be like okay i'm gonna give this a couple minutes and see what this is about so that on a smaller scale people can be like okay i'm gonna give this a chance because i know that the payoff can be big on this even if it's not from a celebrity or somebody big they they're gonna give it a shot because they they're already interested in the culture i'm gonna give this a chance now whereas maybe five ten years ago they wouldn't have they wouldn't even right. try to give it a chance they wouldn't even thought that's on the radar for anybody nope um and that's again. I think that's the best way to go through it. Mm-hmm. Is just get some close friends, just dive in, yeah, and approach them about it, and explain why you want to do it, mm-hmm. and explain kind of what you'd like to happen. And you'll find that some people um, are really uh, resilient to it. Mm-hmm. They'll jump right in. There's no sort of uh, resistance. Yeah, they're not going to be as shy as some groups might be. Yeah. Um, and then some people need that structure mm-hmm. and that's why pick up a starter set mm-hmm. comes with pre-rolled characters, comes with a pre-roll one shot dungeon. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you're going through it, it tells you to, what to do as the DM. Mm-hmm. And so it really has this nice layover, but whenever you get with a group and the reason some groups don't make it through is they haven't spent the time to talk about what, their goals are what they want to achieve in this yeah. game and i don't mean like what their character goals are mm-hmm. i mean what you as what do you as a Travis person yeah wants, want out of it what i want mm-hmm. what dave or logan or any of the other people we have at this table what they actually want and that's the trickiest part about dming excuse me yeah is actually talking to them about what they want and then making those things happen right you know different players react differently to what happens to the character mm-hmm. different people are uh, have different levels of comfort with um, what sort of themes or uh, things are happening in the game. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll have shades that uh, of role playing or shades of progression that some characters might not be okay with. Mm-hmm. Some people might be uh, might find things offensive right. that other players don't. Right. And those are all things you have to lay out in the groundwork beforehand mm-hmm. because exactly. this game really can. It's, it's a core surface mm-hmm. of your ingenuity and your creativity. Mm-hmm. It's a blank slate. And I think all participants in it can't be there feeling like they're there to endure it. You right. know what I mean? Like, okay, it's D&D night. I'm here to just... No, you have like, to be invested. You, have, you do. You have to be... You have to want to be there. And that's what I was kind of like pitching when we were going into this second campaign. I'm like, I want you to know what your character looks like. Yeah. I, I'm not just saying like you Googled an image of something. <laughs> I want you to know your character, what their look be them. Like yeah. on Friday, wake up thinking you like, what is yo thinking of? Like, what would he be doing today? Like how, what is going on in his life? What's something like, what is he wearing? Like the small things. Cause when yeah. you put yourself there, it makes you care. It makes it you does. want to care. It makes you, and then it makes you excited because then you're like, uh, I know what my character looks like. I know what they feel like. I, I, I have an idea of who they are as a person. And it makes you more apt to want to role play during role play interactions with the group. And on top of that, you're more confident with it because you know who your character is and you're almost speaking through them organically. Yeah. And I've, I've seen that growth, growth tremendously even with our own group because most of us are all rookies. Yeah, I mean, aside from you and Wink, the majority and Logan, the majority of us are complete fresh greenhorns. So, but I've seen us go from like I'm gonna attack, you know what I mean, like to like I raise up from the ground and I dig a rock and I crush his head, and his gut smell like because they're into it and because they've embraced their character and uh, not even just like the fun active stuff, but like changing their voice and like yeah. oh I have this thing where I knock stuff over and just in the middle of a conversation they're just like. Like they, they didn't have to do those things anymore. They didn't have to do those things in the first one because they weren't there. They were like, I'm just going to wait for my turn. Yeah. But now but now they're like, 
I'm going to get in whenever I can because that's what my character is about. And I'm excited about it because I'm embracing my character. I love it. The, the development has been insane. Yeah. And that growth that you share with people um, is something that I think people desire. And when people reach out to me and I get these mm-hmm. emails or I get other places in town that have asked me to come in and DM. Mm-hmm. And when people reach out to me through Facebook Messenger and stuff like, hey, can we get in on this? Right. Hey, how do I get in on this? Um, it, it's hard because for one... When it comes to D&D, I'm pretty tapped out right now. I'm, uh, is, I have as much investment as I have. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to bring me to another clear point that I'm going to put in right now. Mm-hmm. Is when you do find a group and when you do find a game, you have to understand that it, it's, a, it's a game. And while consistency is key, mm-hmm. um, sometimes people will get too invested too quick. Yeah. And it causes burnout. Yeah. So be fully invested, but don't be that person that, hey, I want to play. And all of a sudden, you're in a game every single night of the week. Right. You know, um, you're married. I'm about to be married. Could you imagine telling your significant other, hey, I'm going to play D&D four nights this week? Yeah, no, yeah. that's a nightmare. It's that's insane. Not, that's, yeah, it's <laughs> so it, it's important to have balance. Mm-hmm. It's important to make sure that the time you're fitting in works for everyone. Yep. Because the worst thing is trying to play a game and yep. half your party is not there. Yep. Every once in a while, people are going to miss. Mm-hmm. Things are going to come up. People have responsibilities, jobs. Um, find the sweet spot. Yeah. Find something that will work for the majority of people mm-hmm. and try to be consistent with it. Mm-hmm. As a DM, be incredibly fair. Make sure everyone's having fun. Mm-hmm. It's your world, mm-hmm. but it's also – the people are only going to stay in your world if they're enjoying your world. Right. As much as, as much as you are shaping the world, the players are also shaping it with you. Correct. Because you're creating the atmosphere for them to exist in. You have and to then they're existing in it. Yeah, and then they're existing in it. And then you know, like you you're creating these characters, you're creating this environment, and uh they're literally interacting with it. So right. something you spent all this time, like even like if it was like a physical building you built in this world, they might end up blowing it up. <laughs> you don't know that, they right. don't know that, but it could really happen and it's right. it is because it's a conjoined venture. You're both kind of tackling this uh, 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 creation at the same time uh, and I think that's the coolest thing is the fact that like uh, so being I think I have a unique perspective in the sense that your your experience I'm not but I have my my little experience um, into the game has brought up even more questions to me that uh, that I, I like I, my, my questions now are more advanced than they were when I first started but my, my starting questions were like I never understood um I under I got the the gist of how it was played that you had a character that that was made up, and the DM would kind of string you along some sort of path. But I never understood like I was like, how does the DM even know like what, what what does he like? How does he think about the fact that like oh there's a random elf that's gonna be twenty yards away or something like that? And then I've come to realize it's because oh because he created that elf like a year ago yeah. and he has a that elf ha- has a name and two kids and he <laughs> works a part time job down three you know cities over and he's on this day of the week traveling in this area to hunt and it's right. because you've created this whole actual living breathing world yep. that uh, that people are inter- interacting with and that just blew my mind because I never yeah. thought it would be that intricate. It, uh, to be honest, it gets a little daunting. Um, I know a lot of first time DMs, they, they sort of see you watch Matt Mercer, you watch mm-hmm. these big star DMs and the worlds they've created and what they're immersed in. And even something like Adventaria, um, what people don't realize is I've been working on Adventaria for since I was 16. Right, it's been sculpted. We're, we're 10 years into mm-hmm. this world that I have. Mm-hmm. And I can jump into different timelines of this world mm-hmm. and sort of what's going on with it and what's happening. And a lot of it. There's parallels everywhere. Mm-hmm. You have to be a sponge to, and even players that have characters, be a sponge to what you enjoy. The TV shows you like, the pop mm-hmm. culture you like, mm-hmm. um, the stories and books you've read. Be a sponge to it. Don't rip them off. But if there's elements you like, believe me, it's probably not unique to that writer even. At right. some point, it's been done. Probably by J.R.R. Tolkien. But yeah. <laughs> at some point, <laughs> it's been done. And um, borrow those elements. Mm-hmm. Use those elements to make your story better. And then find ways to create elements yourself that mm-hmm. are just as good as those creative elements, but use them at first. Mm-hmm. Allow that to have an effect on you and the way you make your characters or the way you make your world, the way you interact, mm-hmm. because that's going to be more organic for you than mm-hmm. trying to create up something totally unique from the spot, which is, which is very, very, very difficult. Right. Yeah. Um, 
so going back to going back to our, our, our I guess our first point was so if it were to summarize uh, how how does one get started really your group of friends that you're already comfortable with set a yeah. date that's comfortable for everybody yep get a watsi starter starter kit which yeah. is the co-starter kit um and whoever i suppose would be the person bringing this up the person that would be answering this question right now or, or thinking about uh, uh who the one who's listening to this should be is probably going to be the person that's going to get their groups of friends together yeah um see what it takes to be a dm immerse yourself in um some of the culture see what some of the other people are doing download one shots online yeah There's so much to online download some things online and ask there's so many great facebook groups mm -hmm. where you can ask hey it's my first time dming and what's really cool is the wave of encouragement you get and, you know i follow a bunch of these groups because right. this is sort of my culture yeah and i see all the time hey this is my first time dming mm -hmm. i'll shoot him a message sometimes like hey good luck mm -hmm. you're gonna do great just right. have fun and you see this outpour of comments and people replying and saying hey don't worry about it you're gonna do a great job and People have different levels of preparedness. Mm -hmm. um, players enjoy and give some love to your DMs and know how much work they've put mm -hmm. in um, by doing the, the little things right. Be there on time. Be ready to go. Mm -hmm. If the DMs ask you to do some research, do it. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, just really embrace the fact that this person's going out of their way to try to bring you guys together to play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. It is. And there's a lot. There is, like I said, when I was going back to like understanding the scope of what it took to be a player in Dungeons of Dragons, what it takes for the DM uh, to know how to organically respond in any situation, regardless of a character's like, and we're going along this path and I jump into the bushes. So if you didn't already plan ahead of time that there was an ambush on the left side where he was standing, uh, jumping into the bush you as a dm would have been like uh okay and you're in the bush now right. but since you create a whole world around it and you have this environment and you already have an understanding of where they're standing in, in your environment that you physically create in your own mind and how much effort that goes into creating that environment right it creates very unique interactions to the world because of the fact that um, it was so well crafted and people need to understand how much time that really goes into that that it's not just a theoretical magic path that there that that is drawn on the map it's literally like the dm has crafted like okay yeah i know what this part of this physical map in our little uh, diagram here is where uh, these people are laying and these people are laying and so if my adventurers start veering off to the right for whatever reason right. then it's dodged my whole timeline <laughs> what, uh, what i'm a big fan of and one of the reasons why sort of the beginning of this new campaign that we have mm -hmm. a series on why it feels so smooth is i always like to take starting locations starting places mm -hmm. the first sort of basis of the episode mm -hmm. i'll base it out of a real place yeah um a lot of people will comment on how palio cedro <laughs> sounds like <laughs> palo cedro yeah there's a reason i was raised in palo cedro <laughs> what <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> right i know i've been uh i've been all up in the you know those are my stomping yeah. grounds i grew up there i was raised there mm -hmm. i've walked anywhere across that town mm -hmm. i've been and it's a really cool, unique place as mm -hmm. far as climate goes, as far as you have woods, you have creeks, you have mm -hmm. foothills. And so use something you're familiar with as your baseline and then sort of put the things you really wish were there in it, things you like. And it, you create this very, um, very smooth, sort of easy going, mm -hmm. nice feel. People are like, man, you know that area like the back of your hand. Because you, do. you don't have to think about you it. You kind of do. You know yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, I think, I think that's, I think that's a fantastic point. Then if you're a starting, uh, a starting DM or even an experienced DM, and you're looking to create a new world. Why not start with the one you live in? Yeah. Just make it dope. <laughs> like <laughs> take it and make it better. <laughs> make but it like better. that way you can look at, if you're like, okay, you know, you don't have to, like our, our town is named after our specific town, but you in your brain might be like, okay. I know that if I'm thinking about this town being like my house is where the beginning of this story begins. They don't know that. But right. in your mind you do. So you're like, okay, then I'm going to put this, this, and this, and this here. Then I know that when I'm standing here at my house and these things are here, over there is this important thing. Yeah. And maybe this is where this important thing is going to happen for my adventurers. And now you kind of have in your brain a 
physical tie to the real world on how they might get there. And that's going to help you paint your picture and your story better to your players uh, and make it really smooth for you if they do decide to jump in the bushes to the left because you're like, okay, well, and that puts them on Cedar Street. Yes, yeah. I know that's where that is. Yep. And Cedar C Street is actually next to our herbalist in this situation. So, yeah, he, yeah. you just jumped through the window of the herbalist's house. <laughs> and he's like, can I help you? You know what I mean? Like, so I guess that goes back to like early DMing and painting stories, creating yeah, worlds. Yeah, those and, basics. Because that's, that's really like after you do the one shots and everything, it's that, You get right? into the more advanced stuff. And yeah. We'll, do, we'll probably do an episode just on that, you know, world, world building, building in general. Yeah. Um, but kind of going back to – how to get involved getting in getting how to get started getting friends um, there are some things you'll need mm -hmm. and i always tell people this if one person has a player's handbook mm -hmm. and they're willing to share you guys all have a player's handbook it's yeah. just a little slow that going. is kind of the truth yeah. yeah um the biggest thing is bring a pencil yep bring a paper yes something to write on to take notes pencil sharpener yeah pencil sharpener pencil sharpener <laughs> dice dice um, dice are important to have do you need more dice than you think you do yeah. That's okay. There's a lot of dice. That's here. Listen to me. You <laughs> need more dice than you think you do. So I thought a complete set was good. No. Cause then they're like, Hey, you need, now you're level nine roll 70 sixes. You're like, everybody help. <laughs> like, like everybody, I need your D six. <laughs> Pull all the D sixes for me, please. Yeah. 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 Never have too much dice. Mm -hmm. Um, or you're just rolling seven yeah. times yeah, and just, everyone just kind of waiting like, and watching. Okay. And, yeah. Did you forget yeah. what was your third roll? Damn it. Start yeah. over. <laughs> Make it comfortable. Make uh -huh. sure seating's comfortable. Yep. Make sure lighting's decent. Make sure sound you can hear each other. One of uh, the things that we went through at first is we tried to play mm -hmm. in a storefront mm -hmm. with patrons, with other players yep. playing other games. And that was rough. That was loud. Yeah. yeah, it was loud. So find a place that's comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. A friend's house. If you're playing with a group and you've never met anyone mm -hmm. before. Please don't go to their house and play. Meet at a public place and play. Yeah. Um, find a local game store or find... I've seen people playing Barnes & Nobles before in the coffee shop. Damn. Find a coffee shop. McDonald's I've seen people play before because they're 24-7. They have free Wi-Fi. I've seen people... You that's, know, a, that's a damn good point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? In the future, find your local average ape. <laughs> yeah. Find a local <laughs> average ape, your local ga game store. In 10 years um, from now, in 10, in ten years everywhere. from now, in 10 years from now, when you're watching episode one, find your local average ape to play your first ever D&D campaign. It'll be like Starbucks. <laughs> There'll be one on every city block in San exactly. Francisco. Um, yeah. Find a place that's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Hygiene. Yes, don't smell, man. Put on deodorant. Don't stink. <laughs> um, and if you know you will stink, bring something to prevent it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, just do your best. Dress um, appropriately. Uh, and just, if you're hosting, make it comfortable. Make sure Snacks. everyone has water. Drinks. Snacks and drinks are great. They are They're great. fantastic. They're really great. Especially if you're playing. And no one ever sits down too. and plays for two hours. It's yeah, really difficult. It's, you're yeah. playing for four or five hours. Yeah, which I didn't think. I thought, I thought honestly, I thought a long campaign a long session was an hour as a new player going into it. That's what I thought a long session would be. I had no, no idea what a long session would be. Yeah. And then we had our first one. It was like seven hours. That's at three o'clock in the morning. I was like, Oh, sh Oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> but it went by like that. It was, it was quick. so fast. It was quick. so fast. And you know, you're fully immersed when you take a look at the clock and you started at nine o'clock and it's 2 AM and you're like, Oh man, I have work tomorrow. <laughs> and you're not tired. Yeah, and you're like, still you're gonna ready be tired to tomorrow, go. but you're still ready to go. You're like, so do we just like the sun's almost up? So do <laughs> just we keep let's going? Just keep right there. Let's just, just keep going. I want to be level three. That's what you do. <laughs> uh, oh, sp that reminds me too. Um, spell cards. Spell cards. Spell cards are great. They're um, they're something that if you can afford to invest in, get them. They're I have cheap. a friend. They're not super expensive. They're not. Um, but the beauty about D and D is it caters to everyone of all. Um, financial mm -hmm. availability mm -hmm. it's really if you have no expensive. money and you have wi-fi pencil and paper go right down no one like doesn't have a phone anymore yeah. right no, i'm pretty sure everyone that's extremely rare everyone has access to it's a phone. extremely rare and, it, and if you didn't if you were the one dude in the group that doesn't for whatever reason it's against the other whatever, six have it yeah everyone else does around <laughs> you 100 percent. yeah get on your phone go to all these free websites go to wikipedia mm -hmm. go to what you know mm -hmm. the, there's so many free resources mm -hmm. And write your stuff down. Mm -hmm. If you can afford to go all out, go all out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, some people like me, I built up my collection of things over time. Mm -hmm. um, it was a long 
slow building process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now uh, my closet's full of crap that my fiance just loves. (laughs) (laughs) Um, She's super excited about all that (laughs) stuff. But, um, and that's going to bring me to another point, actually. As a side note. Yeah. If this is a hobby. Yeah. Make sure that you are totally transparent and honest with your significant others about what you like to do mm-hmm. and like playing D&D. Mm-hmm. And it's important that if you're getting approached about D&D and maybe you stumble across this podcast because your significant others playing D&D and you don't know much about it mm-hmm. and you know 10 years from now when we have a million or so hits and we're the top rated podcast like it's going <laughs> to absolutely happen. Yeah. Like I mean obviously when that happens just know that be supportive. Mm-hmm. Earlier when I was talking about be reasonable about mm-hmm. your time. Yeah. Don't go to burnout. Yeah. Um, what I was really hinting at as well was have those conversations with your significant other. Mm-hmm. Hey, on Friday nights, I want to play D and D with my friends. Right. And, and, and they might <laughs> think like, even if they think D and D is dumb and that can go for anything, not just D and D, but like, like if fishing, if they think fishing is dumb. Right. But if you have that com and that's what you do, that's your thing. It's not dumb to you. Uh, right. have, if you have that conversation with them, most of the time they're going to be understanding about it as Absolutely. long as you communicate it. Like, okay, you might not understand it. Like, I get this isn't your thing, but this is my thing. Right. Like, this is important to me. So if you care enough to think that that's important to me, I'm communicating that to you at least that this matters to me. And on Friday night, this is what I would like to do. Rolling dice with the boys. Exactly. Either that or it's I'm going to do meth. Just know that I'm going to do meth. Like, if I don't get Friday, I'm doing meth. I'm communicating so you know that it's this or meth choose. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not sure if I was going to take that No, no, no. I had, this conversation, I had this conversation earlier about Pokemon cards because someone was like, uh, and I get this all the time, this conversation in the, in the shop. People come in, they're like, God, I just spent like 50 bucks on Pokemon cards. And I'm like, dude, think about it this way. Are you going to use these cards? Are you going to play with these cards? Is this what you're going to do? Like, is this your thing? And they're like, well, yeah, like, this is my thing. I'm like, are you doing anything else right now? I'm like, what did you think about today? He's like, I thought about getting Pokemon cards today. I'm like, he's like, 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 didn't want to say it out loud. I'm like, bro, that means it's your thing. You don't have to hate on that. No one has to hate on you for that. That is, that means that's your thing. Other people like might want to go fishing or fix cars and other things that society might think is more like, oh yeah, you can spend $300 on a muffler. That's, that's fine. And that is fine. Cause that's your thing, dude. Embrace your thing. And if your thing is playing D and D or playing Pokemon cards or magic cards, whatever it is, just don't hate yourself for it. Like yeah. there's so many things that suck. The things that don't suck are the things that you should be <laughs> wanting to be into. And if you're into it, don't hate yourself for being into it. Absolutely. Embrace it. Dive in. Be into it. Yep. And don't y- don't hate yourself for buying dice for twenty bucks. Like right. now you have dope dice, dude. It ain't, that could be that could be a four hundred dollar bill for something that sucks. Exactly. And you need the twenty dollar dice to live through the $400 thing you have to pay for that sucks. Right. And as long as you're, <laughs> as long as you're responsible with it. Absolutely. Reason, if you don't, if you have only thing. $20, <laughs> don't, don't spend it. <laughs> it on the right. dice. The, uh, the big thing I, I've seen before mm-hmm. and another reason why D and D sometimes gets a stigma is with all things, with all hobbies, yep. anything in life, mm-hmm. some people overinvest. invest. Uh, yeah. And when you overinvest and you take away time that you should be spending with family or whatnot, mm-hmm. it, is divisive and it actually hurts the game and the culture. Mm-hmm. One of the things I really don't like people to see people do is, and this happens a lot when I first introduce some of these people to D and D who have reached out, um, they get so overly involved mm-hmm. that it's not just, Hey, I'm going to spend one day a week working on it. And then one day a week playing it, mm-hmm. it becomes over the top. Um, mm-hmm. I am very fortunate in my situation. I work on my campaign every single day mm-hmm. but i do it at a time that's convenient and I, not 10 hours a day right i spend a couple hours in the evening mm-hmm. uh sitting next to my significant other on the couch mm-hmm. watching ncis less uh, ncis mm-hmm. um never thought i was gonna like that show it's decent <laughs> <laughs> she's fully invested <laughs> hey shout out to ncis yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um w- or whatever show it may be yeah, the yeah. office yeah. friends We'll sit there and I'll have my laptop out and I'll just be working on things. Mm-hmm. But incorporate it into your world. Exactly. Don't make it don't don't make it eat your Zoom. world. Yeah. Incorporate it into your living world. Which happens. And that should be I mean, a life all of life is about balance. And yes. if you're jumping into something new that that's like D and D and it does incorporate it does 
require you to dive in, dive in comfortably. Just like you are creating the world for Dungeons and Dragons in the real world, in the real world, you sh that's how you should also be creating it. Your yeah. time, your balance, your everything you're doing for it. If you're if you're going to make your character wear everything, do it while you're sitting next to your significant other. Just sketch on a sketchbook with them. Yeah, I'm sure most people would actually appreciate that more than you just being diving on your phone with your head down. Yeah. At least you're kind of like engaging. They're like, hey, check that out. You know, it's a little bit. Exactly. You're doing what you love. Exactly. Incorporating it to the real real world, but not deleting one from the other. I'll ask her all the time, what do you think about this? And most of the time, it's it's like the eye roll, and it's like, I don't know. True. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But you ask a couple times, it's like, wait a minute. I like the first thing you said. Exactly. And it, like, like, <laughs> like the, no matter how much they resist, if you're communicating and, and, and incorporating it, you know, what it is that you're doing, even if they're totally not into it, eventually they're going to form an opinion subconsciously about something without even knowing it. <laughs> even they're like resisting. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. We're like, well, that's a dumb name for that character. You said that he was a brute. Didn't you? Didn't you say his knuckles are on the <laughs> ground and everything. And the, 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 like Harvey seems like kind of a dumb name. They're like, Oh shit. I know so much about this now. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you're single and you're getting involved in this, mm -hmm. um, this culture is huge. You could make a uh, dungeon diver for mm -hmm. like a, you know, name it dungeon diver, a dating website, mm -hmm. dungeon diver, a D and D dating website. Yo. And that thing would have probably 550,000 hits. 459,000 dudes. <laughs> <laughs> and one woman. Right? <laughs> I know. Uh, that'd be funny. Yeah. But um, this is, this is a game. This is a culture. It's a mm. subset of a, a deeper culture mm -hmm. it really is um tabletop gaming is mm -hmm. coming back quickly in america mm -hmm. there's so many different subsets that have evolved out of D. &D. Mm -hmm. um there's a very popular podcast on geek and sundry i was watching the other day not my cup of tea but i loved the idea of it and it's this vampire world it's set in modern times mm -hmm. but you play as a vampire i want to tell you i had someone come to the store i had someone come to the store and and mention that Really? Yeah, we were talking about D and D, and they were like, "Did you see the new one with like the, the vampire thing?" And I'm like, "Bro, what?" Because I th that was just new to me. But that's how fast these things are spreading now. I it's, mean, granted, I'm quick. in a shop. I'm in a culture of people that are coming in that are going to be uh, dabbing into those kind of things. Right. But I'm not in a busy store, and my store mostly focuses around Pokemon. So if someone comes around and is even mentioning D and I'm like, "Yo, that's cool right. that they're interesting, so interested in something about D and D. That's more unique for our clientele." But on top of that, they were also mentioning something that I had just learned about like a couple of days ago because it had just been, it's been sprouting up. Right. And I'm like, wow, things are moving really quick that way. It is. It's pretty incredible. It's, and that's because full of information is instantaneous right now. Mm -hmm. um, the whole geeky culture, the nerdy culture, mm -hmm. is taking over. Thank you, hipsters and millennials. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> we did so it. You guys, yeah. are doing, you guys are doing great for us. <laughs> um, Keep it up, bud. But I think it's because as a society, the embrace everybody regardless mm -hmm. is blowing up. Mm -hmm. It's blowing up. Regardless of your political beliefs, no mm -hmm. matter what side of the aisle you're on, you cannot deny mm -hmm. that our culture, as far as inclusivity right now, mm -hmm. is amazing. It's amazing how easy it is to talk to someone about sports mm -hmm. when I get my oil changed and that same day talk to a huge nerd. Mm hmm or talk to someone that really enjoys music or someone that really enjoys art or whatever card game, video game. It, it's so open. You can't categorize people anymore. No. It's not like life seemed to be more like an 80s sitcom show back in the day where you could like the dude with the football was always the dude that was going to be the popular jock in the school. Like, that's how it was. Like, yeah. in the film, if he had a football in his hand at any given point, you're like, oh, that's a popular kid. So it was like, crammed down our throats. Every, yeah, every, exactly. Everything, all that was just crammed down our throats. And so, like that, when you see that, you want to replicate life that you see. And we kind of got to put in those categories. But then over time, we started to, like, break out of that and realize that that's not at all the truth. You good? Yeah. Um, I got burnt. So, for those of you that see my the top of my head <laughs> and it's starting to flake to, like, and come apart. Off. Yeah. yeah I, um, I played a tennis tournament in Tahoe. How'd you do about that weather? I got I got smashed. No. Yeah, absolutely smashed. Did phenomenal, fun? phenomenal players, um, which is okay. That's, That's all right. It comes with the territory. Yeah. I'm at the point now where I, I try to have fun. Mm. I didn't have fun, but I try to have you fun. Did, you did. No, I, I got I got I smashed. I didn't have fun, but I just got smashed. But, you know. Yeah, I'm at a point, too, in my mm. life where um, one of the things that's alluring to me about D&D &D mm. is um, I either have it 
here, mm -hmm. which is five minutes away from my house. I can literally say to my significant other, hey, I'm going over to D&D. &D. If you need me, I'm five minutes away. Right. Um, or I've had it at my house, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is um, we have another group that plays out of my house. And it's the comfort of my home. Mm -hmm. I own that structure. My fiance and I, we can do D and D. We can have people over. Mm -hmm. We're comfortable there, and I'm very, very, very comfortable here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to go places. Mm -hmm. I don't have to uh, do things different, dress a certain way, act a certain way. Mm -hmm. I get to be authentic, mm -hmm. 100 percent of the time. Not that you can't do that with sports, but um, growing up playing sports, you, you're traveling a lot. You're mm -hmm. going to different places. You're gonna be put in uncomfortable situations. Yeah, a lot. and and you can't just be like, oh, I'm sick now. Like no. halfway through the day, I'm throwing up. I gotta go home. Nope. Oh, okay, you're four hours away, and you're supposed to go. You're supposed to play in an hour. So now what? Yeah, <laughs> and that was with Tahoe. Right? You know, I drove three hours away. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful place. Mm -hmm. The people I was interacting with from Reading that I traveled with, great people. Mm -hmm. Nothing but love for them. But the people we were interacting with from Tahoe, just not my cup of tea. Nothing right. against them. Great right. people. But just I would have been. you can't be as comfortable. Yeah. You're, not as, you're just not as comfortable. I found myself reflecting at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I would have rather just been hanging out at the shop here watching everyone play. Mm -hmm. And then going home and spending the evening with my significant other. Right. You get older, those things happen. With D&D. <laughs> it can follow you. You can be home. Yeah. You can do those it things. It follows you around. Yeah. Tabletop gaming. And you still have that interaction with people, mm -hmm. which is the most important part, is social, physical, and vocal interaction. Mm -hmm. and, and, and having the platform that kind of puts everyone there to do that. Yeah. Because if you don't have something tangible that says you need to go do these things or something that you should go do these things or something that draws you to want to go do it, you won't really do it. No, you know, you part won't. of that, part of that instant now have, you know, have whatever it is I need now culture that we've been brought up into. It's a reflex. So if it's something we don't really want to do and we're pairing it just like you just had, you're pairing it with something you could have done instead. You look back and you're like, I'm going to make the other choice next time. Or right. I'm going to see what I can do to like embrace that for the next time. I think it should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so because D and D again, brings like you know we have a scheduled time like and we all look forward to it right like all throughout the week we're talking about it right like yo friday is this going down like d like uh um Duthmere, sean was talking about how he's like he wants to get an attachment he's thinking about like <laughs> not, like having some kind of like batman thing like a like a sling or something like that that he can like grow into getting used to not having an arm right uh and kind of embracing it as a character <laughs> flaw you know what i mean like he was at first he was just like super down it was like this sucks now i'm just like a weakling useless but i'm like dude make it you're that makes your character interesting right like and that's what and that right there is what i love what's happening now with the world as a whole is we take a look at that and we're like that's interesting Right. Not the perfect shiny dude. We want to look around that and see the, the imperfect guy around the corner that's kind of messed up, that's more real, that's yep. more detailed, that's more like, oh, he isn't just the strongest dude that wins every time. No. That's cool. That's what, what, why? Yeah. Yep. And so that's what I was trying to pitch to him. I was like, dude, that makes your character more interesting. It does. You might, you might think that makes your character soft or it makes him weak or suck. Uh, maybe physically for now, but you, now you, I'm jealous. I'm like, you have a more interesting storyline arc now than most people because you almost died. Yeah. And now you have a missing limb. You are not normal. You know what I mean? So that's dope. Like, embrace it. How can you embrace it now? Right. You know? So, like. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, I love it. I yeah. love the fact that, and for everyone watching, just remember, too, when we talk about how much time and effort we put into it, yeah. it's not as daunting. No. We have you know, a I mean, we have production. I mean, yeah. we have a legitimate stream, and we sit down, and we also have a conscience sort of we want people to watch yeah. and enjoy the storyline. Yeah. So the work that we put in um, is actually – a little more excessive than D and D. D and D is much simpler right. than what we do. We go further. We go. We go the distance. Yeah. Um, Travis probably spends. I mean, how many hours each day do a lot to our setup, our stream, our production, ordering, editing, getting stuff ready. I try to much like what we were talking about earlier. I try to incorporate with the other things I'm already doing. Right. So like, as I'm like, for instance, with the new upgrades for this stuff, like the lighting and the cameras and stuff like that, I'm like, I know that this is going to be improvements for our Pokemon stream, which is a big part of what we do. Right. And so I was like, so yeah, I see how this is going to set for my D and D stuff, but I'm going to streamline this through what I'm doing for Pokemon as well. So 
I try to incorporate doing both so that I'm not wasting any time as far as, um, you know, not hurt, not hurting the other side of the stick for other things that we're doing. Because part of me diving into D and D was, uh, it was something that I heard about as something that I wanted to be a part of something I wanted to just dive in and try. Uh, and like anything I do, um, I usually go 200%. And so I try to look into embrace the culture and what can I do to incorporate, uh, this into what I'm currently doing. How can right. I maximize my time in doing both of both things? Much like it's not easy. <laughs> it's no, no, it's not. It's not easy. But um, you know, like I probably on average um, half of my day is like I tell people half of my day is answering questions and uh, about packages and and packaging up packages, and then the other half of the day is physically um, adjusting what it is I'm doing, whether it be the, the studio or editing or um, changing the actual physical structuring of the business, like the store, right? <laughs> actually tearing walls down, you know, um, yeah, which we've done for this. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, the fact that what we've managed to do in such a short amount of time, and I encourage people, if you guys get the chance to go to the Facebook page and scroll way back in the videos mm -hmm. and see that first episode where so we were, different what we did so different the, <laughs> everything and to where we're at now that's two months ago it's i know a little over such a rapid and such, mm -hmm. such a rapid amount of time but it's really a testament to the work we put in mm -hmm. um you know gary came in and helped us knock out a bunch of walls mm -hmm. other people have been involved and instrumental into helping us get to where we are mm -hmm. but um you know the, the two of us with what we built mm -hmm. so far it's been incredible mm -hmm. and if we can do this much growth two months how much more can we do in two years mm -hmm. and that's really exciting exactly um we are we're just about out of time yep. today with what we got yep. but this is something we're going to be doing every tuesday yep this is uh uh so look forward to um soon as we're getting closer and closer now to cumul accumulating all these new improvements and getting to a point where we are comfortable uh with uh, our campaign with our setup with our people and everything Look forward to soon seeing a uh, actual logo for Adventaria, yeah. uh, an actual um, Patreon set up so you as the viewer can participate in funding, supporting uh, uh, not only Average 8, but also the uh, Adventaria campaign um, and being able to interact more with the campaign yourself because the Patreon will feature different aspects that allow you to um, inflict yeah get into involved the have into some influence ex influence yeah, yeah influence the actual outcome of the show so um yeah i would say that this pretty much would be the conclusion to our very first episode of dungeon apes i think that's a wrap yeah that's a wrap dungeon apes um if you enjoyed it guys please share this video share the podcast mm -hmm. yep and shoot us some questions yeah find our facebook page you feedback the matters feedback, feedback great. matters like People don't, I know that you hear it all the time for popular YouTubes, popular Facebooks, popular, you know, that, that they're like, share, like, comment. Like, yeah, you hear that a lot. And then that's great. It really, really matters. E if, even if you are the first comment, the it first so share, the first like, that matters so much. Ask any question. Yeah. Get involved. Yeah. We love it. It matters. It, it, it's hugely important to building the community, and it's very inspiring t for us in the world and the in the environment that we're building to continue on and something to build from. And we're going to create a Facebook D and D community. Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk about it anymore. We're going to yeah. after this episode, we're going to make a page. Yeah, so Average Apes D and D page. Yeah, and we want everyone to get involved, join it, mm -hmm. and that's something. On my breaks every day, mm -hmm. I can pop in. Mm -hmm. Fan art doodles. Yeah, something. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, all right, dude. All right, Dungeon Apes, episode one.